Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. Nada El Makashvi of Madison is a Democratic candidate in the 26th State Senate District. The primary is August 11th. Nada, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you, Steve. Well, um, I noticed on your social uh, media campaign accounts, you made this comment. The message of the recent protests, I'm referring to the protests after the uh, murder of George Floyd, it was that Democrats haven't fought back hard enough. I'm wondering if you could elaborate on that, please. Yeah, I think the recent protests in Madison and across the country have shown that uh, progressiveness and forwardness and this new promise of a better America has not encompassed some of the most marginalized communities in our state. Uh, Wisconsin is has become the most segregated state in the country, uh, and I truly believe that that is because we haven't been completely dedicated uh, in racial equity, in uplifting our working class. Uh, and so for, for me, I think that Wisconsin uh, Democrats have that uh, incentive and, and the value system to really fight harder uh, to make sure that we are, you know, uh, helping Wisconsin become a society that is that is equitable, especially for marginalized communities. Um, and so uh, the protests in Madison, uh, the tearing down of statues, I've been very clear, um, really showcase that for many Madisonians, for many Wisconsinites, uh, the promise of forwardness hasn't included them, uh, especially if they are uh, Black, Indigenous, people of color. And so it is our moral obligation to make sure that we are fighting for them uh, just as much as we should be. What do you think should be the next, next step to uh, eliminate the racial disparities in uh, the state of Wisconsin, Nada? I think we truly have to look at housing reform, looking at equity within our education system, uh, make sure that social uh, nets are funded uh, adequately and really come to terms with uh, anti-racism and how we as a society have perpetuated racial disparity, uh, di racial disparities through our, our uh, you know, racist uh, housing practices, uh, through gerrymandering and displacement and eviction laws. Um, and so I think uh, a, a very, uh, kind of dedicated uh, forward movement in terms of solving racial equity uh, also includes being very uh, cognizant of our past and how much we, we need to be held our, ourselves accountable for uh, in order to move forward. The governor's nine bill special uh, session package would eliminate chokeholds and no-knock warrants and set uniform training standards for those that want to be police officers does the governor's package go far enough or would you like to see it go farther, Nana? Yeah, I would like to see it go further. We must start by acknowledging that our police system is directly tied to the legacy of slavery and slave patrols in our country. Um, it was state sanctioned violence against black people then and not enough has changed since as we've seen. Uh, in no uncertain terms, we must defund and demilitarize the police across Wisconsin. Uh, Tony Robinson's death here five years ago, uh, you know, should have been the wake up call for us. Our leaders gave us the same empty promises and rhetoric then as they're giving us now. And, you know, Breonna Taylor was shot in her home because of our complacency. George Floyd was suffocated with a knee to his neck because of our empty promises. So our leadership really must reflect uh, that we truly value Black lives. And I'm, I'm proud to have put together an extensive Black Lives Matter policy uh, that includes defunding the police and investing in uh, our in our communities uh, with that money. And so for criminal justice reform, uh, that includes abolishing prison labor, ending prison gerrymandering, and ending cash bail. Um, and so uh, this is also really greater than police brutality, Steve. I think the Black Lives Matter movement offers us a chance to really reflect on how racism is deeply embedded uh, within our society. We need to come to terms with the fact that, you know, like I said, Wisconsin is the most segregated state in our country, and that promise of forward has not been fulfilled for, for the Black community. And so that is where I see value uh, in defunding the police and investing in, in uh, communities of color. And we need to have leadership that prioritizes Black lives in order to do so. 
Well, uh, one of your earlier answers, you mentioned gerrymandering. So do you back the governor's idea for a people's commission to draw the next set of congressional and Senate and assembly boundary lines? Yes, uh, we must have a fair and nonpartisan redistricting process. Um, and I support a nonpartisan process to draw legislative maps instead of the state legislature. Uh, in addition, uh, the new model really should prohibit using incumbent residences, election results, party registration, or other socioeconomic data as an input when redrawing districts. Uh, this is important. We often think about gerrymandering in terms of purely political parties, uh, but we must also ensure that voters are not penalized for their racial identity or economic standing. Uh, now more than ever, we need to encourage citizens to engage in our democracy and have ownership in their government. Uh, and that can be a hard sell, right, if they know uh, they are being cheated out of the district. So with fair redistricting all Wisconsinites can go to the polls on election day and know that their voices will be heard. Now, when you talk about criminal justice reform, does that include legalizing both medical and recreational marijuana? Yes, I'm strongly for the decriminalization and legalization of medical and recreational marijuana. Uh, the war on drugs is a war on black and brown people. Black people are four times as likely um, as white people to be arrested for marijuana marijuana possession and this has to end uh, and so legalizing it now is actually not enough we also must make amends for the decades of criminalization in the black community by releasing and expunging the records of all inmates held in wisconsin prisons for nonviolent marijuana charges um, and you know finally legalizing marijuana also offers us a chance to stimulate our economy um, and directly invest in marginalized communities i would protect the rights of those convicted of marijuana charges uh, to enter the cannabis industry. And uh, especially with COVID-19, taxing marijuana could be a great increased source of revenue uh, that I would propose using at the local level to allow communities to invest in education and, and social safety nets. If um, COVID-19 means we're going to collect up to $2 billion less in state tax revenues, which is one estimate the governor threw out months ago, mm -hmm. then um, you, uh, you as a senator would be, be presented with the options of cutting state spending or raising taxes and fees. Where would you come mm -hmm. down on that, Nada? Uh, well, the impact of COVID-19 and the Wisconsin GOP's failure to really take the pandemic seriously is devastating our economy. More importantly, we're seeing the impact of a decade of attacks from Scott Walker and the GOP on unions and collective bargaining power, uh, really in order to lower taxes for the wealthy and corporations. So Wisconsin's working class uh, was already struggling to afford housing, health care, uh, student debt before the pandemic, let alone paying for them now. Uh, and so the first step, Steve, must be taxing corporations in the wealthy in Wisconsin uh, so that they pay their fair share. You know, Robin Voss uh, laments government spending, but then happens accepts over $150,000 uh, in federal funding for his small businesses. So we really must call the Wisconsin GOP out at their own game of hypocrisy and prioritize investment in, continue, in communities that are hurting. Uh, and as we rebuild our economy, COVID-19 also offers us an incredible, unique opportunity uh, to begin investing in building a new green economy. Um, and I'm in full support of a state job guarantee that will train and employ Wisconsinites uh, to build the green infrastructure of tomorrow. Uh, and I think these economic investments in our public infrastructure will pay for themselves by increasing economic activity, uh, putting Wisconsinites back to work with strong union jobs, and really preparing Wisconsin to address the climate crisis in a way that activates our economy. And so it's easy to say that we need to, to, to cut taxes uh, but when you actually start talking about it, does Wisconsin's you know, unemployment system need less funding or more? Clearly it needs more. And Scott Walker cut that funding and now it's ruining people's lives uh, and really endangering them. So it's easy to say we should cut taxes, uh, but we need to make the moral argument that funding government programs uh, that help people are especially important during a pandemic. A couple, couple more questions on the pandemic. Um, it not only, as, as we've talked about, cuts the tax revenues for both state and local governments, but it increases the strain on healthcare systems. Mm -hmm. We've seen the role that hospitals in Wisconsin and across the nation have played in uh, fighting COVID-19. If you're a mm -hmm. state senator voting on the next state budget, should hospitals become uh, be a greater priority than they are perhaps in the current state budget, Nada? 
Yeah, well, Wisconsin has missed out on uh, millions of dollars of free money from the federal government by refusing to expand Medicaid. Uh, people are quite literally dying uh, because GOP leadership thinks that health care is a privilege uh, for wealthy power brokers only. And so for us and for Madison, health care really is a human right. And now more than ever, we really must fight to ensure that Wisconsinites are not dying because of their race or the neighborhood that they live in. And so the racial disparities of COVID-19 in Wisconsin are, are stark. And so with African-Americans amounting to 6% of the population, uh, you know, but 29% of all deaths, it really makes you think. And so, yes, we really must prioritize health care and especially hospitals in rural and marginalized communities. And so, for example, every Wisconsinite is currently uninsured should be immediately covered under Badger Care. Um, it's unconscionable that during a, a pandemic, a global pandemic and record in unemployment, more Wisconsinites than ever are losing their, their health care access. So we must expand Badger Care uh, to all Wisconsinites that have lost their employer health care, uh, you know, due to layoffs and those uh, and all of those who currently lack insurance and, and really enroll all under undocumented Wisconsinites as well. Um, additionally, we, we must ensure that all hospitals and healthcare providers uh, have the resources they need to, to save people's lives. And so finally, when, when we, you know, talk about funding priorities, Wisconsin must also invest more in universal testing and contact tracing. Uh, you know, we don't have to choose between containing the virus or opening our economy, uh, when in reality, they are the same problem and they're dependent on, on each other. If, if a business complies with all the CDC or the WEDC uh, COVID rules and regulations to keep both its employees and its customers safe, should that business be, in, in, be immune from friv frivolous lawsuits? Well, I think it's important to be clear. Republicans are talking about frivolous lawsuits because they've been criminally negligent in protecting the lives of Wisconsinites. Uh, I think their guilty conscience and their, uh, you know, money grubbing greed is what drives their policy priorities, to be quite frank with you. Um, if businesses intentionally infect people uh, because they think max masks are a hoax, then they should absolutely be held responsible. Uh, but the reality is, is that if you follow health guidelines, you're not going to see those kinds of bogeyman frivolous lawsuits that Republicans love to talk about uh, while they sit doing nothing for the people of the state uh, to actually counteract the virus. So. Uh, unfortunately, due to Trump's complete incompetence, it's clear that there will never be a coordinated national response, uh, and therefore Wisconsin will continue to have to fight COVID at the state level. Uh, so small businesses and employees are, are both being forced to choose between staying safe at home or being able to keep the lights on and keep food on the table for their families. Um, excuse me. Therefore, I think the state needs to be giving employers and employees really more choices. Uh, and I personally would advocate for funding for any business that decides to close if they cannot stay open safely. Um, and on the worker side, we also must allow you know, employees that lose their job to COVID-19 concerns uh, to be able to enroll in unemployment insurance. Uh, and giving these options should really help flatten the curve uh, and, and curb the economic impacts of, of COVID-19. And I think a big part of that is really standing strong and saying that unions and or employees really must have a seat at the table when their employer creates a plan for COVID-19. Um, Wisconsin is a high property tax state, as you know, Nada. And that's reason for caps and limits on what schools and local governments can levy in property taxes, mm -hmm. although referendums allow these governments to exceed them. Mm -hmm. If you're a state senator, would you vote to keep these revenue, these property tax levy caps and limits in place? Yeah, so the Wisconsin GOP preaches smaller government when in reality they continue to strip local control uh, in order to consolidate power at the state level. And so the bottom line is that we must give back more control to local communities and give their voters the freedom and liberty to make the best decisions for their own needs. Um, at the same time, we must acknowledge that local governments continue to have to rely on local funding because the state continues to defund services and take away collective bargaining power from the middle class. So increasing property taxes would not be as detrimental to the middle class if they don't have student debt, if they made a living wage and did not have to fear bankruptcy over a medical emergency. So yes, I support removing caps and allowing local governments to, to really make the decisions and while also acknowledging that the real systemic solution uh, is to have the wealthy pay their fair share in state taxes. 
the um, raising the gas tax was something Governor Evers suggested more than last year. We don't have a stable source of funding for our highways. Would you consider raising the gas tax, which is now 30.9 cents a gallon? It hasn't been increased in more than 10 years. Yeah, I think we must prioritize rebuilding our roads and investing in our public infrastructure. Uh, the fact that the gas tax has not even kept up with inflation is ridiculous. Um, and that's just the start. Uh, really. So we must also use this opportunity to address climate change and the threat of carbon emissions on the future of our planet. Uh, for this reason, I, I support progressive taxes on gas and transportation uh, that will start slowly increasing the cost of fossil fuel usage uh, for those who can afford it. And from an equity perspective, we can then reinvest that funding in, in creating free and renewable public transportation in cities and creating a high-speed rail system that connects regions. Uh, and both both of these will be really influential in creating a, a Green New Deal for Wisconsin. And so on the issues of roads, increasing investments in public transportation will decrease the usage and wear our, and tear on our roads. And so that increasing economic activity will increase government revenue uh, and take a really important step towards solving the climate crisis. So uh, that would be my answer. When, when a local government wants to approve a public works project, should they be required to give a preference to Wisconsin companies? The reason I ask is a study found in, 19, in 2015, out-of-state contractors got $72 million worth of contracts, but that more than doubled to $146 million in 2018. Mm -hmm. Should local governments have to give preference to Wisconsin companies, Nada? Mm -hmm. uh, Government-funded products projects should have a rigorous, transparent, and equitable bidding process. And so I support efforts to require locally hired labor, women and minority owned businesses and businesses that uh, pay a living wage to be prioritized in the bidding process. Uh, so Wisconsin has a long tradition of public private partnerships to get the job done. Uh, and when we uh, spend taxpayer money, we should be we should absolutely be ensuring uh, these contracts are distributed fairly and competitively. Thank you. Last question. Um, the 26th Senate is an open seat. Mm. Uh, you want to talk about differences between you and your primary opponents? Why are yeah. you the most qualified? Yeah, look, we're all Democrats. Uh, we will all tell you that we want progress. Uh, our, policy, our policies are not all the same, but we mostly agree on them. And the political reality is that any of these progressive policy agendas uh, will be met with obstructionism by the Wisconsin GOP. Uh, it's been almost 10 years, Steve, since Act 10, and very little has changed in terms of uh, Democrats' strategy and, a, and approach. And Democrats, including one of my opponents, controlled the Capitol uh, uh, in a trifecta uh, from, I believe, 2008 to 2010 and failed to go far enough to make change. And so August 11th, Madison really has a choice. We can continue with the broken status quo or we can put forward the most progressive candidate in Wisconsin history, which I am. Uh, Madison is a democratic stronghold. We really need to elect a leader uh, who will fundamentally change Wisconsin politics. And by taking bold and unapologetic uh, progressive stances, I'll be the candidate who can shift the political conversation uh, to the left and give Governor Evers more leverage in, in negotiations. And as the first Muslim and first rural immigrant of color ever elected to the Wisconsin Capitol, I really will be able to relate to voters who have never been represented by the Democratic Party. Uh, and therefore, my primary goal will be to expand the Democratic electorate flip key swing districts and really turn our purple state into a democratic stronghold uh, to get our progressive policies passed. And so I'm really proud, Steve, to be running a strong grassroots campaign that has received over a thousand contributions uh, of an average of $25, uh, which include over 475 donations, almost half of it, of $10 or less. So we also have the field and volunteer support to export our political power, uh, not just in the 26th district, but a across Wisconsin. Uh, and I can tell you right now that after we win the primary on August 11th, we will immediately begin campaigning in swing districts across Wisconsin so that we can work to win back those seats, uh, cement a new generation of progressive power and turn Wisconsin blue in November. And so that's what differentiates me from the rest of the field. Thank you. Nada Elm, I'm going to get this right. Nada Elma Kashvi. There I go. Excuse me. Thank Perfect. you for your, thank you for your patience of okay. Madison is a Democratic candidate in the 26th Senate District. The primary is August 11th. Nada, thank you so much for talking to Wisconsin. Thank I. you for having me.
Stay safe. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.